So I watched Navarra Media's video of Melanie Phillips denying Israel's manufactured famine of Palestinians and had these thoughts about it. I genuinely believe that so many fascists and bigots like Zionists and TERFs can't find a way back to reality because they've invested an oversized part of their entire identity into their hatred and violence. Now, they can't backpedal because it would mean destroying something of themselves, if not their entire careers, their social circles, their comforting self-image. It's a sunken cost issue. They'll never get back what they've lost, so they have to keep going. Otherwise, what was all their hatred and violence for? They find both options abhorrent. The one way means they become a complete pariah, acceptable only in the most fascist spaces, The other way means a painful reconciliation of who they've become and the sad reality that they will not be welcome in many spaces of people's lives they're complicit in destroying, which, as the world has made clear, includes most of society. Now, I realize that for many fascists and bigots, they're fine with not being included in the spaces that are safe for their victims. But an ideal society that is safe for marginalized people is unwelcome to fascists and bigots that try to undermine that safety. An ideal society is one that isn't just unwelcome, but openly hostile to fascists and bigots. See Karl Popper's Paradox of Intolerance. Now, bigots want it both ways. They want open acceptance of their hatred and violence, but at the same time they want to be a part of an exclusive club. This is why a lot of crypto-fascists won't outright say what they believe, because they get to push for hatred and violence while at the same time maintaining a veneer of social acceptability. The problem we face in the modern day is that the Overton window of acceptability has moved so far over to the right that fascists like Melanie Phillips can lie in our faces when we have proof to the contrary of her lies. She knows she's lying. We know she's lying. But she can't not lie. This is who she is. Even CNN and the BBC, who were both incapable of telling the truth about Palestinians in the early days of this genocide, are reporting on the manufactured famine imposed by Israel on Palestinians, which tells you how strained the narrative being pushed by Zionists is. The truth of the genocide is open, and the world knows what Israel and the US are doing. So the people pushing the Zionist propaganda are not being taken at their word, But the fascists don't want to change. I do think we need to revisit why fascists have been historically deplatformed from speaking on the news or in public debates or at universities. Because while I do believe that few people believe Melanie Phillips, she is pushing for a world in which genocide is acceptable. I've recently heard the term consent manufacturing, in which people argue for the conditions under which it would be acceptable to commit genocide. Denial and the rewriting of history is often framed as the last phase of genocide, although I do think that it is often the first step in the next wave of violence. I suspect Phillips is aware of all of this. I suspect she knows how inhumane she is being. And I think we will see a time soon when she will deny ever having said what she said, or claim that she was lied to, or she will double down. Again, this is a sunken cost issue for her. This is why we shouldn't platform people like her. This is why we should vehemently denounce people like her.